Hello YouTube, welcome to Eclectic Autos. This is my very first YouTube video, or as I like to say, my very first YouTube video 2.0. Because I did post an earlier video about this car, but I wasn't really happy with it. I got some feedback that was positive, um, but also constructive, so here we go again. This is a 2003 Lotus Esprit. I think it is a very eclectic auto and an iconic auto. They uh, made this car for a 28 year production run, 1976 to 2004. 10,675 were produced and the V8 models are even more uncommon. Only 1,237 V8 models were produced from the mid to late 90s to the end of the production in 04. And of those 1,237, only 292 left the factory with the redesigned rear end like this vehicle has that you'll see. Um, I much prefer the redesigned rear end as well as the V8 model. I wanted this um, car to be my first YouTube video because I fell in love with this car as a kid. Um, probably from about 10, 11 years old when my parents purchased this video game for me, the Lotus Turbo Challenge. Um, and then of course, you know, I saw it in James Bond films and other movies and my interest just grew up until owning it and my interest has stayed just as passionate to this day. So let's give you a tour, um, a walk around and we'll take it for a drive. See you in a minute. guys let's take a tour around my 03 Esprit now this car was uh, signed into production in May of 2003 it was originally sold by a dealer in Austin Texas called Autostrada uh, I can find some of that info because I have a uh, Lotus certificate of provenance it doesn't cost too much money and pretty cool thing to get if you own an Esprit or any Lotus this vehicle um, has had several owners. I believe I'm the fourth or the fifth, uh, but I've had no major issues uh, with it. Um, I purchased it knowing that the timing belts would need to be done. Another interesting tidbit from uh, the Certificate of Provenance was this is the last of five Esprits sent to the USA for 2003 of the same color inside and out. So they give you little uh, tidbits like that when you get that certificate of provenance. I don't think that makes it any more valuable, but just kind of a cool fact about your own car. Not many options with these. There is a glass roof. Uh, currently I have the solid color panel in. I do have the glass roof. And let's take a look at uh, what really is a very interesting engine for the Esprit. Let's take out this cover. So this is not a Toyota engine. That is a uh, widely miss uh understood when i bring this to like cars and coffee everyone thinks that this is a, a toyota engine this is a lotus designed engine uh, it's a three and a half liter uh obviously twin turbo v8 it's a flat plane crank uh she makes 350 horsepower 295 foot pounds of torque and um I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but she's still a pretty quick car. She'll do a 0 to 60 in about 4.3 seconds. 0 to 100 in about 10 and a half. And, you know, back in the 90s, that, that was uh, very respectable when this car came out. Uh, she'll top out at over 175. And uh, 
it's just a really cool engine. I much prefer the uh, V8 engines and, uh, you know, something that's really interested about Lotus and uh, General Motors was Lotus actually helped um, GM design the uh, engine that was uh, in the LT6 in the C8. I'm sorry, in the LT5, the C4 Corvette. Lotus uh, co-designed that with GM. And then uh, obviously those LT5 engines were very oddly assembled by uh, Mercury Marine, the Merc Cruiser division, you know, boat engines. Uh, I don't know how that came to be, but the GM and, and Lotus collaboration came about in the 80s. Uh, General Motors had acquired Lotus. Um, but really didn't have any experience making a mid-body engine vehicle. And, you know, they sought Lotus's expertise. Uh, hence, uh, the LT5 was born. Um, in addition to the LT5 engine, Lotus also helped uh, design and upgrade braking and steering systems for the Corvette, um, which is probably a great thing because... More modern Corvettes handle a lot better than their older counterparts. But this is not a Toyota engine. Um, I have nothing against Toyota engines, but Toyota didn't even make the four-cylinder engines that were in the... Um, I'll put the cover on. That were in the four-cylinder Esprits. Uh, Toyota didn't really come out, I believe, till collaborate with Lotus on engines until uh, the Elise, I believe. But that Elise is not my uh, expertise. I am solely interested in Esprit's uh, as far as Lotus goes. Not a spacious interior, but not uncomfortable. Um... Five-speed manual gear box. This car has about 25,000 miles on it. Um, if you're ever thinking about purchasing one of these, do see when the timing belts were last done. But there's some interesting things with these that threw me off when I first um, bought this. The air conditioning vents right up here only work in the forward facing. So you see that little blue icon, that is how you get cold air. Likewise, you don't get any heat out of those forward facing vents. That only comes out at the floor um, or up, you know, by the windscreen, I'm sorry, the windshield and uh, or, or both. Uh, you do not get heat out of there. That really threw me off. I thought something was broken and wrong. Um, down here, you have some more controls. You have light dimmer. This little thing is like a fob for your Cobra alarm um, to disengage the alarm. You have to put something in there, or you can press the remote on you know, the button on the keyless entry remote, and, and that disengages it too. I believe for two minutes, and then you have to either push the button again or uh, put something in there. And that metal button is your uh, fuel tank release. No real storage in here. That's about it for, you know, your registration, insurance. Nothing in the doors. That stereo unit uh, is original to the car. It's not a aftermarket. It's They came with Alpine stereos and speakers. Uh, speakers in the door as well. She's a little dir dirty. I apologize. She's going to get stored for the winter here soon. Nothing really interesting in the front of the vehicle. No storage room. Uh, the, the back behind the engine has a, a decent amount. You know, you could fit a suitcase and a bag in there. A smaller suitcase. Up here is reserved for the spare wheel. Fuses, windshield washer fluid that type of things. That does not latch closed. There's actually a handle in here 
that's kind of very well hidden. And you've got to really feel around. There it is. So you move that handle and that now secured the front of the car. Yep, she's locked. I've had no really issues with this car. I had to do the timing belts when I purchased it. That went to a specialist in New Jersey. Battery is here. Very easy do-it-yourself job, I did that. Uh, timing belt service, Lotus C service, and a broken thermostat. That was my first check engine light. Those things cost with a specialist about eight grand. And this had new timing belts in 2022 along with that Lotus C service. Lotus services go up in letter by severity. So A is a basic, B is more significant than A and, and C includes your uh, timing belts. This car is 172 inches in length, a little over 45 inches in height and 74.1 inches wide. Uh, I once put this in an enclosed trailer myself and had a very hard time getting out of it. So if you're a tall guy like me who's a little overweight, I suggest maybe taking out the roof as a way to get out. <laughs> uh, she is wider than she seems. But let's take her for a spin, and then we'll uh, conclude our video. All right, guys, driving the Lotus. You know, this car is quite, I don't know, it's still nerve-wracking every time I drive the thing. And I don't know if that's because I'm terrified that something's going to happen to it, or that it won't start. All kidding aside though, I really haven't had any major mechanical issues with it, so I don't know why that's a, a concern of mine. Um, I've owned this car for about a little over two and a half years, and I haven't had major mechanical issues. And I'm very good about um, you know, making sure she gets everything she needs maintenance-wise. And that can be quite the, uh, the headache if you can't do it yourself or you're like me currently and I can do it myself but I don't have a lift. Um, but driving the Lotus, pure driving pleasure. I know that's another car manufacturer's slogan, but that's my experience driving the Esprit. It, uh, she's quick, even by today's standards. Um, gets your heart racing and adrenaline rushing every time you drive it. You know, this is a car, though, that you have to pay attention to when you're driving. Uh, like a lot of analog you know, cars. This isn't a car that you want to be messing with the radio, messing with your phone, um, messing with all the new technology that's in cars. You know, it's it's you, the car, and the road in this car. And, and you really need to pay attention and, and mind the car uh, when you're driving it. That being said, it is a blast to drive. It corners like it's on railroad tracks. Um, I have done some very fast cornering in this car and, and it has surprised me each time that I do it. Um, I one time felt like I was gonna not even spin out, just lose control. 
and, and you know, not even lose control. Uh, I can feel the rear wheels slipping on, on a corner, going at a high rate of speed. Um, and it was very easy to correct, very easy to, you know, bring it back into control. It didn't even lose control. I could, I could just feel the, you know, wheels slip and very easy to bring back. Um, handles so well, you know, it is a nice, heavy steering, or, or I've heard some people call it tight steering, you know, I can wobble the wheel, and like this, and the car doesn't do anything, it doesn't wobble side to side, I hate when you wobble wheels a little bit in a car, and the whole car wobbles, I, I can't stand anything else, even in my daily drivers, I don't like it. Which is typically why I've preferred just the way European cars handle. Um, although American cars have gotten much better, and I've never much been into Japanese cars. Nothing wrong with them, got nothing against them, just uh, not my cup of tea. Uh, but this car handles like a dream. Uh, you know, I don't even think Lotus calls it power steering, they call it something like power assist. It really mimics a vehicle without power steering. I own a car that doesn't have power steering, and uh, this car really mimics that. Um, except, you know, obviously when you're in a parking lot or a gas station, uh, you it's a little easier to maneuver because it does have power assist or whatever Lotus's term for it is. This car is comfortable once you get in it. And I say comfortable as in if you're in it for an hour and you're on a backcountry road like myself. Um, I don't like bringing this car where there's a lot of other people. I like back quiet country roads, a nice hour of driving, listening to the car, maybe listening to some tunes with my daughter. Uh, that's, that's my kind of driving. I don't like driving with people or, or in traffic, uh, for several reasons. But this car really is appropriate, I feel, more so on a track than it is on a backcountry road. Um, it is comfortable, but I wouldn't want to be in here on a three, four hour trip. Uh, just me personally. Uh, I don't find it that comfortable. But once you get in here, it is comfortable. It's uh, certainly more comfortable and spacious than some other vehicles I own. Um, but I would love to get this thing on a track. I, I'm thinking about bringing it to uh, Watkins Glen next year. Uh, the Lotus Car Club has an event there. I feel that's where this car really, uh, really is meant to shine. Uh, but she's been a blast to own. Really no major issues. I don't suggest washing this car, at least not in a high pressure, touchless car wash. You're bound to get some type of issues, like your turn signal's not working, or uh, if anything, I lightly wash it myself, or I waterless wash it often, because it gets cleaned every time it's driven, and then it gets covered with a car cover. I've done about 1,500 miles on this car. I only try to drive it four or 500 miles a year. Um, and we are approaching the end of a season right now. Uh, I do not drive this car in the winter. I don't care 
who gives me hell for that. Um, this car stays in a heated garage. I have no interest in driving it on salted roads. I understand it's fiberglass, but no thanks. She, she's decent on gas. I've, uh, I measure my Phillips uh, by gallons and dollar amount and, and all of that, and she gets between 15 and 16 miles per gallon. But I don't really push this car. If I do, it's seldom, and where I'm sure that there's no deer or police. people give this, uh, you know, the manual shift in this car, a lot of people in other videos, reviews, give this a really hard time in how it feels. Does it feel as nice as other vehicles that are stick shift that I've owned and own? No. But I don't understand the hate for it, other than the fact that Lotus had to detune the V8 engine when they came out with it because the transmission they opted to use um, couldn't handle the, the power. Uh, other than that, it, it, I mean, it shifts smooth, it smith, shifts nicely, not quite as predictable as I would like, but nowhere near as, as bad as, as people give it a hard time for. I don't drive this vehicle in the rain. I don't drive this vehicle in uh, any kind of bad weather, only dry roads. So I can't comment on wet road handling, but with a nice set of tires and a dry road, this car will not disappoint and is an absolute just blast to drive. Um, Visibility could be better, but is not awful. Brakes are, are outstanding, um, although not as good as uh, obviously modern day carbon ceramics. But this, this vehicle will, will provide wonderful stopping power if needed. You know, you got power windows in here, you got heated windscreen, um, recirc for the air, I'm just looking at the options. Windshield wipers, I, I don't even use the windshield wipers. All in all, if you want to own an Esprit or are thinking of owning an Esprit, I would absolutely do it. These are not getting any younger. Personally, I feel the V8s are the better version of the Esprits, but absolutely, what a wonderful, iconic vehicle. Um, who wouldn't want to own it? You know, this is most definitely a wonderful piece of automotive history, and if this is the car that, you know, you like, that you had a poster on of your wall as a kid, why not do it? I'll see you in a minute and we'll wrap up our video. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe because I do own some other cars that we're going to film and we'll see where this channel takes us. Um, if you're thinking about buying an Esprit, like I said, do figure in when the timing belts were done because they're really not bad cars to own or they're really not unreliable. They get a bad reputation. I don't know why, but nothing like this is going to be cheap to own. I don't care if it's a Lotus, a Ferrari, a Maserati, 
any of those cars is going to cost money to maintain. If you can do it yourself, great. I can do a lot myself. I don't have a lift. I'm working on getting one. But until that time, a lot of the services I needed had to be sent out. And as I said, a little over 8,000 of that was the Lotus C service, which included the timing belts, included a broken thermostat, and included a rear drive shaft seals that were leaking. Um, the only other things I've had go wrong with this car was the air conditioner refrigerant leaked. It had no refrigerant. Uh, they couldn't find a leak, so they did put in dyed refrigerant. So if it ever leaked again, we would hopefully discover where the leak was. Uh, it has been filled with refrigerant, and it still works about a year later. Um, I did have a check engine light last year, which it went out for service, and that was just a air intake sensor. A uh, $30 part, well, actual Lotus part, was $30 bought from a dealer. Um, and I've had all the fluids flushed because other than coolant and oil, I had no record of any fluid changes. So every fluid was flushed in this car. So in two and a half years of ownership, doing a major timing belt service, you're looking at a little over 10 grand in service costs. Um, for this type of car, I don't think that's bad. Uh, I know Ferrari services can run significantly higher in some cases. Um, it's a lot of car for the money. These are going up in value, so I suggest if anyone's interested in them, don't wait, especially the end of uh, production run V8 models. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.